Welcome to Quality of Life Radio, hosted by Lisa and Nancy, editors of BigBlendMagazines.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Big Blend Radio's Quality of Life show with Nancy and Lisa, the publishers of Big Blend Magazines and also full-time travelers on the Love Your Parks Tour. You can keep up with all of it at bigblendmagazines.com. Uh, today's show, we're going to be talking about education around the world. How to have like an like effective learning. How does that happen? Effective learning, effective teaching. Does it differ between countries? Do, does it differ between continents? Uh, we have Bobby DePorter. We call her the queen of excellence. She is based in Oceanside, California, which is her headquarters at the Quantum Learning Conference Center. Uh, Quantum Learning Network is, uh, she's the president of that, and that's really an amazing program for education of teachers and also school districts. She's also the co-founder of SuperCamp, which is the world's leading summer academic achievement program for teens and preteens. And you know why we call her the Queen of Excellence? Because she created the Eight Keys of Excellence. It's an amazing program uh, that really teaches what's well, character education uh, for everybody. And that is the foundation of quantum learning and also the foundation of SuperCamp. Uh, Bobby is the author of multiple books, including The Eight Keys of Excellence, Principles to Live By, and her latest is Excellence in Learning, or excuse me, Excellence in Teaching and Learning, The Quantum Learning System. And she co authored that with Barbara K. Given. Uh, I encourage you to go to our website. We're talking about quantum learning today, so go to qln.com. Supercamp, the season is coming here in America, but it's going on year-round around the world, so go to supercamp.com. And if you want to learn more about the Eight Keys of Excellence, go to eightkeys.org, the number eight, so eightkeys.org. So welcome back, Bobby. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. Good. It's a good day. Oh, good. I know. It's like, it's interesting. We're at the beginning of 2020. And uh, mm -hmm. last time we chat, we were at the end. We we're like the balance key, right? Balance key mm -hmm. of excellence 2020. And I, yeah. I think I entered the world with the flu and the cold or whatever. And my body said, you really need to balance, girl. <laughs> so, so I got a little bit of a deeper voice today. <laughs> it feels good, actually, in some ways. It's like I could be a whole different person. But yeah, it's, it's interesting thinking about uh, the eight keys of excellence. And that really is what permeates through everything you do. It does. It's foundational to our work. And you know, we hear so much over all these years, so many people have adopted it and, mm. and it uh, creates this core inside for people mm -hmm. to know who they are and feel good about themselves and how they respond to others. So really yeah. blessed to have the eight keys of excellence. Yeah. And everybody, uh, like I was saying, this is the foundation of what, you know, super camp is about. And I, I wanted to touch on super camp because as we start a new year, I know a lot of parents are going, okay, we, we got to look at, you know, what's the future for our, our kids. Their, mm -hmm. The kids are looking at that, setting goals, um, and maybe looking at summer camp programs. Uh, but I, like I said, super camp is year-round when you think about it on a global perspective. Um, but how, how many years now? You're, I know you're in the 30s. Yes, actually, we're going into our 39th year. Ooh. Just, wow, oh, so 39. Cool. Next year, the that's following cool. year will be 40, so... It just feels really hard to believe. And I ran into so many parents that went themselves and it starts to remind me, yes, it has been a long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're, wow. you're creeping up to my age there. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yes. I'm like, what, what happened there? You know, I, I, I think about the first time we met you, I was a lot younger, <laughs> you know, but it's, <laughs> I know it's been a while, you know, but <laughs> it's, it's interesting. So super camp, like how you, you've been in how many countries wasn't Kenya and Russia with the first two for you? Yes. Yes. We've been over two dozen countries we've been mm -hmm. in. And the very first one was Moscow in 1990, which was mm. still the Soviet Union. And mm. that was quite an experience. Mm -hmm. You know, getting ready, we brought over 52 U.S. students and we matched them up with 52 Soviet students. Wow. And they did uh, homestays for three days. And that worked out so well because with our 52 students mm -hmm. coming over, you know, they got to know each other a little bit on the travel and plane. But when they got there, they matched up one by one to a Soviet uh, student and lived in their home for three days. 
So they got to be best friends. So when we started the camp, it was always a U.S. and a Soviet student who were best friends coming, not all the U.S. students clumping together and all the Mm. Soviet students clumping together. So there were so many learnings and so many emotional moments during that first camp. That's really cool. That's amazing. That's really, really Mm -hmm. cool. And so I know we're talking about like is, you know, learning and also teaching the Mm -hmm. same around the world. And I've been through, diff- as you know, different schools in different countries mm-hmm. and multiple <laughs> schools in different <laughs> countries. And it, yeah. I think. It's called experience. There was, <laughs> I'm going to say the teaching was what was different, but the kids, mm-hmm. m- we were all, you know, we're all individuals, but like um, how we studied, I think was individual in some ways, but it, um, I really felt like the it was how the, the teaching differed a bit. And, um, you know, I was reading Mark Reardon's blog on QLN.com and um, he was talking about Malaysia in particular and mm-hmm. they've adopted in quantum learning. Uh, you know, when you think about how you guys work with that and I want you to touch on that because it, he really showcases that the reality is all schools can do the same thing no matter what country like learning and education is universal, you know, like love is universal. Um, How we, you know, do things is universal. We still like to eat food. We like to breathe. We Mm -hmm. all want to drink water and education can be the same way. So he was talking about that and it was really cool to watch the videos and see that too, that um, they're really part of that with quantum learning. So let's touch on quantum learning and what that means because it really, it ties into your book too. Obviously. Yes, very much so, because we know, you know, from experience what works, and we have so much research behind what we do, but mm. I always like to say that you walk into a classroom and you feel it, mm-hmm. you know, that you just, you know, because I don't need research to walk into a classroom and see that the students are all on topic, that they're listening, that they're raising their hands, that they're sometimes kind of chaotic and sharing with each other, excited about what they're learning you know, that they're interested. So, you know, it's like you need research to say, um, is learning going on in here? You know, yes, you know, at a high level, because it's meaningful, they're making connections, they're seeing how do I use this information, making it relevant. That's in a live classroom. And for teachers, you know, I think that's the picture that most teachers want, you know, they go into teaching, I want to serve, I want to help kids. And so they learn what they learn and they go into the classroom and so many teachers, you know, they start talking about their content and teaching all with good intention, but they're not getting the results. And it's so frustrating for many mm-hmm. of them. And then when they have come to our quantum learning, we're all about how do you connect with the students? How do you engage them? How do you elicit interest? How do you get them going deeper with the content? Mm-hmm. How do you see, how do you have them see that the, the how the content can impact or relate in their life you know so that it's alive it's engaging and th- that's what we want now it's not you know, something that they you know teachers can come to a workshop and here's a few strategies yes they can get a few of you know smile at the door you know do callbacks um, do certain things yes you get a result but I say mm-hmm. to really get transformation and really go deep with the quantum learning system and know you have to know the why behind it. So you need to use strategies at the right time for the right purpose, for the right outcome. Mm. So I love that we always call our teachers the maestro because they are orchestrating what Mm. goes on because there's different dynamics in every classroom. So you're orchestrating to get the results that you want. Mm. You know, there is times when, where the classroom outweighs the teacher. I'm just speaking from my own personal, not a, a, a bona fide teacher, but having taught in Kenya in different places and just pulled in and here, do this and do that and going in and talking to students and really not having the experience other than um, let me see what they do first. And where if I learn from the reaction of students where you, when you walk in the room, they size you up and they expect you to do what everybody else does. And I don't know what everybody else does. So I just sat down 
And they looked at me and I looked at them and I just started laughing and they started laughing because I was like, okay, I really, you know, I had, I had things prepared, but I'm not a school teacher. I was just there to present a couple of things. And um, I found that we could come to a common ground first instead of taking over was t- let me see what they think, what they feel, what, what they're interested in, and what my subject was, were they interested or not? Mm-hmm. And they were really kind of like, I'm like, are you interested in this or not? And then they were like, well, I don't know. And, you know, and then they thought about it. And, and pretty much there was about three out of the 50 who said no, or they didn't know. And the others were, well, well okay, yeah. So it's interesting because you know, I really didn't have the training to know how to go in. But then there's a another side of training where you just know people and 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 being you know, a mother, knowing children. Sure. Well, you ask them, too. You involve mm-hmm. them. It's like, oh, my goodness, you know, I have a say in this. Or, mm. You care. You're interested. And it's like, yeah. okay, that goes a long way. <laughs> that That to me is key. Is that you're part of the process, you know, watching the videos of, of, the, of the blog of what's going on in Malaysia and, and mm-hmm. also just going to your quantum learning, uh, you know, teaching. We're not teachers, but I remember saying to you, you know, it's kind of like being on a radio show where it's, an, in, in, it's like integrative medicine, like integrative education, where as a teacher and the, and the school, you're setting a foundation. And so... It's like a family sets a foundation, you know, breakfast is at this time. And if you don't show up for breakfast, something is wrong. You know what I mean? Are you sick? Or yeah. did you, you know, you're out feeding the cattle and something happened. You know, whatever it is, everybody's in a different place. So yeah. it's having that foundation. And I think that's so important where you have your expectations. Yes, there's flexibility and change that can happen. Like we talk about in the eight keys, but without the foundation, nothing then you have an uncertainty in the classroom sometimes in a classroom your foundation is that you know your teachers unengaged but from what i've been seeing and what i saw like you know when we were there i i want to come back to school with you guys (laughs) poppy i want to come back to school because it was so it well it was really about how to engage and Mm -hmm. i found that really important because that's a life skill i know it's a teaching and absolutely but that happens but, in all You know, when you keep life. talking about mm-hmm. foundation, we have um, core components, and it's about orchestrating them. And our first component is a strong foundation. And the definition is where everyone knows what is expected and how to interact with one another. So it's exactly what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. And we start the school year with involving the students in coming up with what kind of agreements do we want to live with, you know, throughout this year and get the students' participation in creating those agreements. And then you have the students holding each other accountable, you know, that they're speaking positively, they're taking responsibility, which is all all aligned with the eight keys, you know, that they come up with their own. And I've had so many teachers say, the students came up with much stricter agreements than I would have ever come up with. That's funny. Wow. That's funny. And I I actually, I really believe that because I, that is funny because it's funny, as soon as you are in control of your, yourself, you're stricter on yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. And that, so that, but yeah, because you're stricter on yourself, but it's also kind of a sense of you know, protection. If, like, if you want to get something done, this is what you need. But you also mm-hmm. talk about having a system that works together. And it, with, I know with you, know, you and Barbara are on the show, uh, before a couple of years back when your book came out on you know the actual learning system and it does a, it look at how our brains work so the mm-hmm. teachers when you look at quantum learning is the teachers are trained in that so that they understand how the students brains are working right so it's, it does go mm-hmm. into to science right and, and neuroscience and uh, being able to it's about thought processes right how we mm-hmm. think Yes. Well, we um, have the Brain's Natural Learning Systems, which is Barb's um, lifelong work. 
And mm-hmm. so when we talk about the foundation, it's about the social. You know, we have social emotional, it's the social. So where everybody knows what's expected and how to interact with each other. Mm-hmm. So that's all that uh, part of it. And then the atmosphere is the emotional. And the emotional is, you know, we spend a lot of time on creating an empowering atmosphere. And we talk about a home court advantage because mm-hmm. with sports, you know, that there is an advantage when they're on their home court. It's familiar. They feel comfortable. Mm-hmm. Those are all the things we want in the classroom because we call it safety, trust, and belonging. And that um, looking at all the things that can be done in the classroom to create that, that they feel um, one, lot, some teachers will put tape on the floor. And so when they open the door to come in the classroom, they have to step across that tape. And that signifies they're stepping into their home court advantage. Ooh. And their expectations in that home court advantage is different than out in the hallway. When they're in there, this is agreement that we respect each other. It's safe. You know, that uh, we do trust. And then there's lots of activities and interactions and conversations where they really feel like everybody belongs. And, you know, no one's standing out above another in, in you know, importance. It's everybody is sharing with each other. And and to just have that line that they walk across and say, now I'm on my home court. Mm-hmm. There's a shift that happens in the brain and, and um, it is a safer place to be. That's, that's, I, I really want to mm-hmm. touch on that because I know that there's safe spaces in universities and things like that. And there's been a lot of, you know, drama over that. And mm-hmm. I look at it, you know, I think there's safe space for different reasons, but when you're in, in a study process and you're a teenager or younger, right? You're in, you know, teens, preteens, or any education part, you need to be able to actually have that point to speak out. And sometimes, and this this is universal, right? This is the importance of what we're talking about is this is a universal thing. It doesn't matter what language or culture you're in. I will say this though, sometimes kids don't get to speak out at home. And so the safe space is really important to be able to go, I can stand up as a young girl, maybe in a culture and say, I've read this and this is what I think about that. And, you know, be able to take part in that conversation. And I think that's an important thing. And there's also just being the typical teenagers where, you know, is it cool or not, you know, but when you are in, so you've got that, but then on the other side, when you're collaborating, like I look at our one-hour walk group on Facebook, people collaborate and cheer each other on to go do another walk or go explore a new place. And I see that happening. And it's a really beautiful thing. And the people that don't want to be part of that kind of drop off on the wayside. You know, I, th- I think when you, it's a teamwork thing and it's about a cult- creating a culture of we're going to learn together. We're going to do this together. We may be different from all parts, but it, it's important that people unite and foster each other's success, you know? Yes. And with a lot of schools, they're putting more um, content um, into the homeroom because before it used to be homeroom, take role, you know, basically mm-hmm. yeah. that's it. Yeah. And now they go into the homerooms and they do want social emotional activity and, and getting to know each other. So there's a strong sense of belonging to a homeroom, kind of like another level of mm. home court advantage. And that it makes a huge difference when they have that base and then can go out into the school because they get to know other students in their homeroom at a different level where they're sharing personal things, their goals, their struggles. And so then when they run into people out there in the school, you know, they, they feel safe because there's always somebody nearby somewhere that, yeah. you know, they feel closer to. Oh, this is really important because it's true. When you've got that kind of environment, you know, mm-hmm. that safety part comes in. And also just communication, like in school, when I, I remember, I mean, you guys know that. You go into school, you go in the classroom, roll call, everybody shut up. The teacher's going to talk for 30 minutes and, and you're just going to listen and just it's like that no interaction and I think that's the key 
and kids are supposed to, you know, that whole thing about, um, you know, <laughs> just be quiet. You know, children should be seen and not heard thing. Oh. <laughs> well, that, you know, that old school saying, and mm -hmm. so they're not allowed to develop as individuals and you, but that's the thing about sending the foundation, right? You have ground agreements, ground rules and everything, but they're allowed to interact and be human beings. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like thinking of school as delivery of content, which mm -hmm. it had been for years. You know, you learn how to read and you learn about content and now with content available at the fingertip and that they, um, it's more on the associations, connections, how do you create meaning? How do you build off what you know? It's that interaction as well as the personal relationships as well. Learning about yourself, who am I? What are my interests? What am I gonna do? And then when you're learning content and how um, to interact with it, it's like, what do I feel drawn to? What are my interests? How is that going to, you know, go out there in the world how's it going to impact my life yeah exactly Th well, that's... If, if you make it personal and and you're ingesting this information and you can find it on a personal level then you're going to remember it and it's going to mean something but if it's somebody just speaking to you and you need to learn this for a test and it's not personal then it's easy to forget mm -hmm. So you have to be engaged in the learning process, has to put you in, like, for example, talking about civil war, and um, the, the kids are not interested because they're, they don't, they're not being drawn into what if you were a child during the civil war, what would it have been like? Mm -hmm. And then if they can draw themselves into what's happening, then they're going to remember it as opposed to just dates and times when this happened, that happened, that happened, that happened. It's like dates aren't relative, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have I struggle with that myself as far as dates being relative. Like a thousand years ago, okay, I I wasn't there, so I really don't know. Yeah, so it's like hard to imagine a thousand years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you know, we look at the different cultural differences as well. Mm -hmm. You know, back with our very first program in Moscow. Right is the students that were there. We had um, about six teachers that were signed up that were going to help us and be in the back of the room. Mm -hmm. And as the week went on, we must have had 50 teachers in the back of the room. Oh, but wow. the students in their uh, classrooms back in 1990 was a, very much about memorization and content and, yeah. mm -hmm. and, and drills and tests, and that was their mm -hmm. world. And you didn't want to be a, a, a tall poppy. You didn't want to stand out above anyone else. It was a time when, you know, they were to, you know, be the same as everybody else. We're all the same. And so when they came to our program mm. and they're learning skills, it's like, wow, look what I learned, the skill. Yeah. But then we go so deep, you know, and what we have is a stepping out process where students really go deep and they learn the eight keys. These are my principles. What kind of values do I have? Where does that show up in my life? And this is at the end of the program where we have a team stand on stage. They spend some prep work, but uh, a student one by one will step up on a stand, like a mm. podium type stand. And they stand there with their hands, arms down to the side, just mm. stand there in front of the audience, very vulnerable kind of place, just stepping up and standing in front of the big group. And that's where they say, my name is, mm -hmm. one thing I value is, and how I show it to the world is, and then mm -hmm. they stay, take one step further and say, I take a stand for my greatness. So this is Ooh. going on nice. in Moscow with 50 mm -hmm. teachers in the back, and I'm sitting next to a teacher, and she went into like convulsions, her body, and wow. she was just shaking and sitting there, and she said, to see a um, student from Moscow stand on the stage and express herself that way, what she wants in the world, who she is, how she's going to contribute. She said, we don't do that. And she said, I'm reacting to eons of suppression mm -hmm. and just not being better than anyone else. And what wow. I felt didn't really matter. And mm -hmm. it I've never seen it expressed at such an emotional deep wow. level 
that these teachers, it was like, okay, it was a, the next generation, and they're standing on stage. It was like wow. they'd never seen that. Wow. And it was like, and they knew it, like themselves. It's like, oh, my gosh, you know, wow. I've never been able to express myself. I've never given me the luxury of thinking about it. Wow. So oh, that was so, so <clears throat> powerful. But when we got the young students, the students just went right into the curriculum. Oh, this is who I am. This is what I want to be. <laughs> you know, they just went right into it. So when you I, say yeah. the students are the same, but their circumstances around them are different. That That's what, kind of what I was trying to say earlier. But if you have a foundation and then you mold it accordingly, right? I think it's interesting what you just said about Moscow and the, and, and mm. the student coming out and saying who she is and, and it breaking oppression. I remember when uh, we did uh, segments with you, um, with the Community Alliance of Youth Success, <clears throat> we, you had all these students do festivals in Oceanside and the different school systems. And part of one of the festivals were students standing up and doing like a TEDx talk. And mm -hmm. one student really came out of his shell. I remember that conversation about him. Um, who wouldn't, he was like the shy kid. And because yes. the students came together, he stood up. Yeah. You know, I think we need that support. I think it's really, really important in life to have that place where, okay, I will try now. And mm -hmm. for youth, there's so much of that peer pressure now, especially with everything especially on social media that those safe places are i'm not you know I'm, <clears throat> excuse my throat um that these they are able to have their their say i look at youth right now standing up you know we've got so many you know greta and we've got you know standing up on gun you know gun rights and all of these things gun control i should say all of those things whether you believe it or not whether you like it or not their message they're taking a stand and I just, I, to me, it moves me that they take a stand that a lot of people won't do as adults. And if we can foster that, whether or not you like their message politically, well, they're I, right. it, it's just so important that they took a stand and I see people attack kids and I'm like, stop it. You know, these are youth standing up that where a lot of adults won't. And I think when you get to find your voice, it is probably one of the most invigorating, most empowering things for yourself. And it's important to keep, uh, speak with good purpose and integrity, those two keys of excellence in mind when you do it. You know, so that's what I love about quantum learning, that you maintain those. Well, I think if you, if you feel you can make a difference, then you also know you matter. Mm -hmm. and 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 that's confidence and that Whoa. and and that's yeah it's like i i believe this so strongly i'm willing to work it and do something towards it and i'm going to do it so you can speak out where maybe you normally wouldn't then you you've you've made a contribution to society just by speaking out so the in just even in that you matter and then when you realize that you actually matter and you can make a difference then you now you have a purpose mm -hmm. and i think that matters that you have a purpose yes meaning to life yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. how I, this is amazing when you think about this youth getting their voice in a classroom too because that's scary you know well, i have to say lisa's always had a voice i know <laughs> no i know it's, it's a little broken today everybody it i'm sorry i just had to say it sorry. i had to say it <laughs> Well, I, my nickname is Kasuku in, in Swahili. It means parrot. Um, but, it, and I do, I can mimic just about every, anyone's voice, but anyway, it's true. Uh, but, but the thing is, um, being able to have your voice and I, you know, I'm actually very much an introvert and going through school, you know, it could be a class, class count, clown or complete introvert. It's very weird. <laughs> Um, and to find the courage to stand up and do the book report or read your yeah. story or the teacher says, now you're going to write your, you know, your personal bio. Who are you? And you go, I don't know who I am. You know, I got to <laughs> figure this stuff out. And going up there, it's very intimidating. 
um, and I thought being in a girls' school would be less intimidating. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> not at all, especially as teenagers. So I think this part where you're um, creating, you're, from what I hear is the quantum learning is part of creating the positive community and reinforcement behind it but realistic right realistic yeah. and you know what i mean so we're not like gushy gushy oh everything's great you know it's a um do you know what i mean well, like i love the way you talked about the voice and the courage i think that mm. is absolutely key mm -hmm. and that is what my passion is and keeps me going is to first of all a student really knows who they are and adopting the eight keys of uh, excellence, they create the strong core so they feel good about themselves and who they are. And then to know who they are and then have courage to speak out because people yeah. don't really know who they are, what they're mm -hmm. thinking. You know, it's like mm -hmm. when you're quiet, well, people should just know. No, you, for people to get to know you, you do need to express yourself and who you are and what you think. We have an exercise um, where we put tape on the floor and there's a little box and it's got a comfort zone box and then we have a big learning mm. zone box and so student it's really interesting because students on three by five cards will write down um, uh, uh, things they want to achieve or goals and then when they come in they they put their cards either in the comfort zone I want to achieve this but it's really easy for me you know, and, mm. and then there might be a goal that's way, you know, the 50 yard line out there. Right. And then there's another one that's, oh, it's just, you know, a few feet outside, Mike. And then the students all look at each other's because one student will have something that's in the comfort zone. And for another student, that exact same thing is out on the 50 yard line. And then looking mm. at um, this is a goal I want to achieve. Who can help? You know, and yeah. so then pairing up with somebody, well, that's really easy for me. I would love to support you in that. Mm. You know, that's really interesting. Nice it's interesting coming, you know, from an older person's perspective and how I was brought up. And I re my grandmother, who I love dearly, and who gave me lots of good advice. However, she used to say, don't look at something you'll never be able to do because you'll just get hurt. And Not exactly I, the big, hairy, audacious goals. Yeah, <laughs> it's just really. It just oh, I have so I just, many things I wanted to do and thought I could do, but that sentence it sticks with. Don't um, look at something. Nan don't even look at it. You see, but like, then, but no, uh, but Nancy, look. Then you went to Africa. You know, you did all these things. I and know, she goes, and I did everything I wasn't supposed to do. She always so told that. me you can have your wild and crazy <laughs> ideas, but you need to get your roadmap to go there. How are you going to do it? How are you going to really, do it? But really, I just you know sometimes I don't. I don't know if grandparents' parents realize how much impact some of those sentences and repeat things. And I know it was done, done out of don't go crazy and do something you're going to get hurt over. So it's yeah. protection, but it's also, uh, yeah, you it's, know, de it's demoralizing. It, it, but well, but, yeah, but when, really, when, when uh, I think about this in a, in a classroom setting, I don't remember any teacher really talking to me about goals, who you are as a person, any of that life skill. I don't remember that. You better learn this piece of Shakespeare or you're in trouble tomorrow, you know, <laughs> and it doesn't matter what you think. And then if you do go off on the, hey, I really thought this piece, you're wrong. And I'm like, okay. seriously, dude, I understand poetry and, you know, Shakespeare, but I see this part of this poem and you're going to tell me I'm wrong. It's a piece of art. No, don't do that to me. And I think that's the, the, well, that's what happened. It's a real thing. Oh, go to right? art college and see what happened. Yeah. So, but that's what I'm saying about like, um, and then eventually you won't stand up again in class. You won't offer mm -hmm. your opinion and you think your opinion isn't worthwhile, but I kind of did because <laughs> I did. But, but when that happens, you just don't yeah. stand up anymore. And that's what I did. Eventually, I just was like, mm -hmm. you know what? I'm not standing up. I'm not answering any questions anymore. And then you become disengaged. But yeah. your environment of what you're talking about is you're fostering an actual communication and a real dialogue and a dialogue of where are you moving forward? Mm -hmm. Well, you're thinking and about looking what, at what your dreams are or, you know, yeah. going through a process of who you are. 
mm-hmm. and leading towards discovery of that purpose and what you want to create. And it, uh, yeah, it gives the meaning and comes from that place of I matter. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. So when when you think about globally and and also local, you know, domestic domestic, you know, I'm thinking travel here, domestic travel. <laughs> when you think about here in America, what happens? How does this happen for schools? They contact you at qln.com and what's the process? How does that all work? I mean, is it like you go in to teach teach the teachers or do you, I know you travel all the time, so are you traveling out to Malaysia, or what, what happens? Yeah, we do send people there. We're just starting in the U.S. is that we have a school or a district, and I always say it starts with a champion because it takes energy, you know, to have mm-hmm. it. It's, we always say it works, takes um, effort and time. It's mm-hmm. not just magic, oh, I'll do a half-day workshop and everything will change. It takes a commitment. It takes, you know, going deeper with the work and really understanding the research and why behind things. Mm. So we often do a a teacher training that um, could be a week. (coughs) And during that week, you know, the teachers, but what we like to do is start with the leadership. And so that we have the principal or the superintendent really supporting the work. Yeah. Mm. So that's exactly getting getting when, everybody together in the school. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's important. Well, getting on the same page, having a common culture that the people all rally around. Like just having the eight keys of excellence mm-hmm. adopted school wide makes a huge shift in the classroom. Oh my gosh, it makes a huge <laughs> shift as a in an individual. I mean, it's like, you know, if if Nancy and I get into a heated discussion, then we both pull out the speak with good purpose card. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like, well, nanny, nanny to each I other. Think that's, no, I, I really think that's probably the hardest key. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. It, it, no, but that's the thing is you, it has become part of a way of life. And then in school to mm-hmm. adopt that, keeping integrity. I know, especially when you talk about ownership, you talk about that line walking as soon as you walk in here this is what the culture is you know it's the mm-hmm. same thing it's like you walk into a certain restaurant restaurants and businesses have this mm-hmm. you won't go into my hotel room and trash my hotel if you set it up that way and you let your clientele know you're not coming mm-hmm. into my room to trash my room you know i know this just from mm-hmm. travel there's certain places that don't do that yes it's a it's a sense standard it's a setting of standards. And if you don't, mm-hmm. it, it's like, it's not, not caring. You know what I mean? It's like, if you don't set standards, then it means you really don't care. And then I think that's, yeah. or don't know that you're doing that. You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. But the reaction or the feeling from the person walking in is you don't care. And they mm-hmm. maybe really do, but just don't know. Right. So yeah. yeah. Cool. 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 So, Bobby, I want to ask you, as you travel different countries and you're connected to all these children, um, looking at across all the countries and maybe just picking one age of the kids across the country, I know there's a difference in language and traditions and dress and cultures and all that, but do you find them pretty much on the same level, and when I say level, it's probably the wrong word, but are they thinking the same things at the same age? Hmm. Good question. You know, I don't know about thinking about the same things. One thing, um, early on, we were in Singapore, and I always remember Mm -hmm. our facilitators were starting, you know, with the opening words, and they're used to getting, have strategies to get attention from the students in the U.S., Mm -hmm. And they found in Singapore, they didn't have to get attention. The students were sitting there looking, waiting for the first word. <laughs> you know, they had a different oh. culture of just yeah. respect and pay attention to the teacher, mm. you know. And so that was different, you know, that mm. valuing the education and, okay, we're going to be sitting and listening. Mm-hmm. But, you know, why Super Camp was so popular from the very beginning in Singapore is that the parents wanted their children to get a love of learning, to find Mm. some joy Mm -hmm. in learning. And they weren't finding that there. You know, it's like, oh, yes, they're learning the content. They can do well on the test. But 
you know, are you a joyous, lifelong learner that likes to make mistakes and, and so you mm-hmm. can go deeper and find out what you did wrong and try Ooh. it again? You know, you get messy and engaged with learning rather than, you know, that I'm in this uh, structure and I'm taking right. exams and I have a lot of stress. So very different. So it, that it, that it, is a difference. I, I, I have to agree because teaching in Kenya, I found the students were so excited. Yeah, they were yeah. so excited about learning something new that they were so engaged. I was almost overwhelmed. I'm like, whoa! Their face and then is in, the, in the states, uh-huh. you were you ninety percent of your time was trying to get the students to be engaged. In Kenya, uh-huh. the students were so engaged. We were like, whoa! Hold on, <laughs> calm down. Yeah, <laughs> and let me catch yeah. up. Yeah. Well, and, that, uh, yeah. What is, why is it so different, do you think, between the two countries? What, what happened here? I don't know whether there's more structure, you know, some yeah, yeah strict structure, structure about how you behave. Just like in Moscow, mm. was like, don't stand out above somebody else. Whether it was expressed or not, everybody mm. knew. Mm-hmm. Hmm. It's, it's, and, it's, and even top schools. Now, this is quite a, few, a lot of years ago, but I still remember it well as in Geneva in Switzerland. Mm-hmm. You know, a headmaster called us and said, I heard that you were doing really great things and getting great results. And we have our senior retreat and would like you to do a program for them. And then for, it was six months out. And every mm-hmm. month he would call me and said, we're, I'm very excited. I want you to come and work with our students. Mm-hmm. And then he said, but I don't want any of that American hype. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, what exactly is that you know what does it's like, that well, mean no, well, you know no jumping around and clapping hands or yelling or that kind of thing and so oh, then wow. it was like after a couple of phone calls I said you know that's not the point of the methods we don't no. have to jump around with loud music to get the result it's like that's not the point that's not you know so that's yeah. fine we can come and so we had our facilitators really look at gradient level and kind of tame it down, you know, that part of it. And, and with what we're doing and we're started off, but I tell you, it was, you know, I think a day or two into it, they were right back up with the music on and the students, mm-hmm. you know, interacting loudly and doing whatever they did. And, and then um, a hmm. month later after the program, the headmaster wrote me and said, best program we ever had. So, oh, you know, the, awesome. the students, that gets the sameness, you know, the students give them an opportunity where they can express themselves. And it wasn't yeah. just random noise. It was, you know, exuberance and just yeah. I'm learning and let's interact and let's get messy with the learning and, mm. you know, and feed I, off each other. And, and I there think was that's a lot of so important because they're able yeah. to be themselves and actually develop into themselves. And if you don't allow them to, they will do it on their side and they will do it the way the other side that people don't want to the students to do mm-hmm. if you keep learning, cutting fun. it off they're going learning to find a way fun. they're going to find but, a way and it won't be the right path that you you know want the, it won't be the positive path all the time mm-hmm. and to me it's like they always talk about um careers and what you do in life that it doesn't feel like work when you're doing the right mm-hmm. thing and that's the truth and it's the same thing as studying if you're really mm-hmm. You're going to enjoy school when it's in the right, when everything's in that working zone. And yeah, you could have a wrong teacher, but if one has taught you, hey, you can do this, mm-hmm. you can empower yourself this way, you're going to be able to shift through, you know, it could be a wrong teacher in that you're not meshing or whatever, you know. Sorry, I hate to say yeah. that, but there is such a no, thing but- of it not working because it, again, is human relations. And kids need to be able to develop into themselves in some way. And if you don't allow them to start to grow, it's, it's mean, man. <laughs> okay. I had, this, I had this teacher, Mr. Pottmeyer, and I, I did algebra one, two, three, four. I'm not going to say I liked it, but I, I, I managed it. And then trigonometry. And I seriously, I was like out to lunch on that one. And he goes, you need to, it's, it's not that you don't have the ability. You need to change your mindset. And every day he said, you need to change your mindset. You're blocking. You, you got this. 
you just need to change your mindset. Think of it in a new way. And, and eventually, after a couple of weeks, I was like, oh, okay, look at it this way, look at it that way. And then eventually I got it. I'm not going to say I liked it because that would be dishonest, but I managed it and I could pass it. But there, it, it just seemed like, why am I doing this? Why am mm. I having to learn this? You know? And he said, because you can. And I was like, okay. Mm-hmm. You know, so sometimes when, when kids are struggling on a certain subject, the teacher can help you through it by telling you, you know, look at it a different way. Think about it from a, a different perspective. And maybe you don't see now the value in it, but you will later. Just the fact that you accomplished it to him was the value. And then that we all learn, you know, and have mm-hmm. our preferences and how we learn and some things yeah. are easier for one and harder for another and vice versa and all that that goes on. Also, mm-hmm. you know, any type of content, you can uh, chunk it, make it visual, repeat it mm-hmm. back, make associations. There's things that can be done, you know, to improve uh, how you're learning it. Um, so all of that, because there is a way you can you just got to try different strategies. Of yeah. How your mind works. It's, it's got to be I know fun. I had a best, it's got to be fun. I, I had a best friend that was really, she was getting straight A's and everything, but I would get good grades except language. I just couldn't, the auditory, I just couldn't hear mm. it, couldn't do it. And the teacher, oh my gosh, you know, um, I felt was very poor, you know, just, I felt yelled at for the wrong answer all the time, but I go to my friend and she just taught me in such a different way that I just got, you know, it's like a little bit of time after school every day, she would say, okay, this is the lesson. And my friend would teach it to me. Wow. Mm. See how that is. That's interesting. They know she knows you. So that's, that's why I say there's that connectivity that has to happen. You know, when you talk about the quantum learning system, because to me, what I like about it is it does, it has this integrative approach about, you know, personality and what needs to happen. How does, you know, look at each other's brains. I don't know, but it's about fostering that, um, that environment where you can learn and it can be fun and you can be who you are, you know, and of course, like you said, there's rules, there's a foundation. Um, so we're not all going crazy in the classroom, but what age does this all start? Because I know we talk a lot about preteens and teens and, um, but what is this, is that what, what it's set up for? Or is it set up for like early, early uh, education? The Quan Learning teaching method is just good teaching. Mm-hmm. And it's about engagement and joy and learning. So it applies to all ages. You know, you, in a preschool, in adult classes, it does not matter. Mm-hmm. Because the same systems are in there. Because it's about orchestrating learning where you make connections you get curious you find you know what interests you in making connections to the content it's learning the content uh through having an experience first Mm -hmm. and um or a story so that you build common knowledge for the whole class so then when they're learning the new content they connect into it and it's about really reflection and review and going deeper how are you going to use it what does it connect to so it's just going deep with learning so when you walk Mm. into the classroom there's a feeling of expectation and what Mm. am I going to learn and how I'm going to you know when I walk out the door what new information and connections have I made you know that all inspire me so there's a lot of aliveness in the classroom just going from classroom to classroom to classroom I've I've done that before in a school I always remember one where you know, the teachers were, you know, when it was a start, the doors were all open. The teachers were all standing there. You mm. could hear music. They were smiling, you know, yeah. and the students are interacting and they're going there. It's purposeful in the hallway. And and I remember this one little uh, young student, it was um, in middle school and, and he, you know, was told who I was and that I heard about quantum learning and he just brought me his notebook. And he just, can I share with you? And opened his notebook and said, this is what I'm learning. And this is how my teacher taught me and shared so much with me. It was just one of those moments. Wow. That's cool. That's so awesome. See, that's, that's the thing. It's, cool. It is about being mm-hmm. joyous about learning. Because when you're interested in stuff, 
you get you geek out. It's the joy of geeking mm -hmm. out. <laughs> That's how I look well, at it. It's true. It's true. It, like, you know, it, it really is. It sets you up for your life. And, you know, I, again, the AQ is the foundation of that. You get to have flexibility and change your course. You go, mm -hmm. all right, I've done with that. Especially as you're growing as, as a youth, you go, okay, I thought I was interested in that. Now I'm interested in this over here instead. That's okay. Mm -hmm. That's part of learning. And you can do it in midlife times too. That's why people have midlife crisis. Like, hey, I <laughs> want to change course. Change a course. You don't need a Ferrari for it. <laughs> just, yeah. you know, I'm just yeah. saying. I'm just saying. But uh, Bobby, always such a pleasure having you on the show and uh, good information because I, I love that, you know, learning, we are, it's like we're all connected in that, that dialogue and uh, education is key to life and again everyone the website is supercamp.com qln.com for our education friends and also the a keys of excellence we're on a mission to have 50 million youth uh live the a keys of excellence everyone needs to live the a keys of excellence so check it out at eightkeys.org. it's free for families and schools there's a great program there as well so check that out and everyone, thank you for joining us here on Big Blend Radio. Keep up with us at BigBlendRadio.com for all our different episodes and all the different places you can uh, tune in uh, for the podcast. Download them in like, any place from Stitcher to Spreaker to iTunes, Spotify, all those great places. And we always love to play music for our guests and, of course, for you, our audience. And Nikki Chris is awesome. She's a parent, uh, an amazing musician. Uh, NikkiChris.com is where to go and find her and it's K-R-I-S for Nikki NikkiChris.com we're going to play her song Dream Big because I think every time we talk to Bobby it's about that Dream Big, go high and do it you know, so <laughs> thank you so much Bobby as always Okay Two Outside, not a care in the world Playing with the friends, let the fun begin Fantasies unfurled A bucket, some string, and someone to sing Got a melody in my head Mama, this is what I want to be someday This is what I